you for joining me tonight on Pajama Prayers. We have something really exciting for our show tonight, and I know you're going to be so glad that you're watching. If you usually watch us, you know that we begin the show with a game of hidden pictures. But I've been thinking about summer vacation this week. You know, school is out, and it's time to start thinking about summer vacation. Where to take it? Well, it always helps to make the decision easier if you know a little bit about the location. So we have decided for the next few weeks to kick off Pajama Prayers with information about some of the places that tourists love to take summer vacations. The name of our tourist spot for this week is Italy. To help you decide if Italy might be the place for you to take your summer vacation, here are some facts about Italy. Interesting and unbelievable facts that might have you saying, is that for real? Enjoy. And now it's time for, is that for real? Did you know Italy is a peninsula in the south of Europe? That means it's almost completely surrounded by the Mediterranean Sea. Italy is easy to recognize on any world map because the country is shaped like a high-heeled boot. It looks like the boot is kicking a ball, which is the island of Sicily. Don't you think? The flag of Italy is a tricolor flag composed of three vertical bands, green, white, and red. Some say they represent faith, hope, and charity. The capital city of Italy is Rome. It is one of the oldest cities in the world. Some of the most beautiful, oldest monuments in the world are found in Rome. One of these is the Colosseum, an important theater where emperors organized performances and athletic competitions. Here, gladiators fought each other, as well as tigers and lions. Rome is also the capital of the Catholic religion. The Pope is the leader and his headquarters are in Rome. Every Sunday, he speaks to the people in St. Peter's Square. Now here's a fascinating fact. The world's most active volcano, Mount Vesuvius, is located in Italy. The eruption in AD 79 buried the city of Pompeii in ash. Because the city was buried so quickly by volcanic ash, the site was well preserved and it was rediscovered about 300 years ago. Take a look at this. The Italian Post uses these weird and wonderful vehicles to deliver people's mail. These cute little quadricycles are completely electric. This may come as a surprise. Pinocchio was first published in an Italian newspaper. And a few more surprising facts. Gelato is taken so seriously in Italy that there is a whole university dedicated to the study and instruction of gelato making. Also, it is illegal to die in one town in South Italy the law has been in place since 2012. The reason? The cemetery's full. <laughs> hmm. Did you know that Italians believe the number 17 is bad luck? That's why some buildings in Italy don't have a 17th floor. This superstition comes from the Roman numeral 17. That's because these letters are an anagram of Roman numeral 17 with a lowercase m which is Latin, meaning I have lived, or my life is over. And take a look here at some of the most amazing Italian inventions. There's jeans, the helicopter, a calculator, Nutella, which we're all thankful for, a parachute, and the violin. What is the most popular sport played in Italy, you ask? Soccer. Many children also play a soccer board game. 
Did you know the Italian pasta is renowned worldwide and is eaten at least once a day? There are more than 200 different shapes. Pizza is surely one of the country's most famous exports, and in Italy, it is usually baked in a wood-fired oven. Italian pizza is very thin, but it's loaded with fresh vegetables or thinly sliced ham, salami, artichokes, or olives. You'll love this. Italy is famous for sports cars. For example, the Ferrari FF sells for over $300,000. Now that's a chunk of change for sure. Here's an interesting fact. One third of all European animal species can be found in Italy and half of the planet species that grow in Europe. In the Alps, you will very likely see the marmots, which make a very high-pitched calling sound. And if you're very lucky, you might even spot a lynx, a wild cat with little hair tufts on its ears. Finally, and this is my favorite, the Italian alphabet consists of only 21 letters. The letters J, K, W, X, and Y do not exist, except for what they call lean words. That means words that originate in another language. Now that's something that will make you wonder, is that for real? Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that. And you know what? It did have me wondering, is that for real? Some of it was so unbelievable. We're going to turn to our story now for tonight. And the name of our story is When God Made the World. I hope you enjoy the story. When God Made the World In the very beginning, before anything was, before God started doing what it is God does, when all that existed was wide open space, God imagined a universe and began to create. God hung trillions of lights, stars big and stars bright. God turned the dark sky into a glorious sight. God put planets in places, with moons in some cases, and galaxies that reached the outermost spaces. God made comets that fly with tails through the sky and asteroids and meters that sometimes zoom by. And with cosmic explosions, God set space in motion, causing planets to orbit their sun with devotion. And somewhere amid all the swirling light, inside a cluster of milky white, among stars and planets and cosmic dust, God made a place for the story of us. Because when God made the world, God displayed heaven's glory for you and for me and for all the world's stories. Our planet God made a blue and green sphere and designed it to orbit the sun once a year. God made daytime and nighttime climates and seasons and all kinds of weather that varies by regions. God made continents and oceans and islands and seas, a north and south pole that God put in deep freeze. God carved rivers and brooks, mountains and caves, made beaches with sand and huge crashing waves. God made tropics and plateaus and glaciers and meadows, marshes and tundras and erupting volcanoes. God made some places high with peaks in the sky 
and places where snowflakes still fall in July. In quite a few spots, God made it so hot should you visit, just know you must drink a lot. God made valleys so low and geysers that blow and Earth's surface, God put well springs that flow. Then, with gardens and forest and other things green, God made earth come to life using soil and seed. God made cypress and pines and bushes and vines and all kinds of trees with leaves God designed. Plants full of flavor, like basil and thyme, and trees that grow citrus, like grapefruits and lime. God made flowering plants and plants that enchant. While most you can touch, God made some that you can't. Roses, be warned, are prickly with thorns. And there's an African melon God covered in horns. And poison ivy's backlash giving you a rash. Whatever it touches, you'll itch and you'll scratch. But don't let that stop you. Run barefoot through grass. Pick a flower or two. Or a bouquet, perhaps. Find a tree you can climb. Or with a seat and some twine, build your very own swing. Or a backyard zip line. And when you eat grapes or pour syrup on crepes, or into a forest you go to escape. Give thanks to God for all that God made, for the fruit and the syrup, for the trees and the shade. Cause when God made the world, God did all that God could to create every detail for our joy and our good. Now what happened next is a mystery at best. But God made a bird, and that bird made a nest. So God filled the sky, perhaps over time, with birds and more birds, and most learned how to fly. God made bluebirds and blackbirds, big birds and small birds, a few birds quite absurd and the loudest birds you've ever heard. Crows crowed, doves cooed, chickens clucked, owls hooed, robins chirped, pheasants purred. The world got noisy when God made the birds. Then the ocean God filled with fish, shark, and krill. Creatures God made with fins and with gills. Swordfish and trout, fish sleek and fish stout. And whales that God made to breathe through a spout. God made sea rays and eels, fish red, yellow, or teal. And some fish so odd that they hardly look real like a fish that has fangs, or a monster-like face, or a fish that flies, or makes its body inflate. And wherever a river, ocean, or sea touches dry land, there's likely to be all sorts of creatures living their lives on land and in water. Well, that's how they survive. Like otters and frogs and turtles on logs, and crocodiles gathering in swampy bogs. And then God made cows, horses, and goats, and God made gibbons with inflatable throats. God planned lions to roar and tigers to pounce, and kangaroos, God thought, hmm, let's make you bounce. God made bears to growl and molts to plow, and under full moons, coyotes to howl.
Donkeys brayed, giraffes bleated, jaguars prayed, and rhinos stampeded. Bunnies hopped and beavers chopped, and in muddy pools, hippos flopped. Yes, all living creatures from whales to snails, from those covered with feathers to those covered with scales. Each God designed with a home in mind to develop and evolve if needed over time. Cause when God made the world, every creature on earth became a part of life's cycle, having value and worth. And God made people, people like you and me, people with souls, people with stories, a global family tree. God made us all flesh and bone covered in skin and made all of our bodies to have hearts beating within. Well, God gave us bellies and legs, fingers and toes and fashioned our faces with eyes, mouth and a nose. God made our bodies uniquely equipped for walking and talking to eat and to skip. God wired our brains to feel love and feel pain, to process and learn and read and retain. But despite all we share, we're all so unique. God made us all human with just a few tweaks. Each of our faces, bodies and traits, our skin tone, our features, God did create. God made some people shy and some people loud and some who thrive in the midst of a crowd. Some make music, and some like math, and some are prone to blaze their own path. But always remember, cause this much is true, God had a purpose for making you. So use every gift, every talent or shtick. Make the world better with your God-given trick. Bring smiles to faces, show love and good graces to those who need hope in all different places. Discover a star, a planet or moon, or help keep a forest from dying too soon. Save a whale, hug a tree, protect every bee, recycle, repurpose, reject apathy. Cause all of creation whispers God's story, the mountain, the ocean, the blue morning glory, the raindrops, the sunshine, the grapes on the grapevine. With nature, God gives us a glimpse of divine. And just like a star might showcase God's light, or a waterfall give us a sign of God's might, the same can be said of me and of you. How we live, how we love, tells God's story too. Cause when God made the world, and the world started spinning, the story God wrote was just a beginning. The End Every time I read that story, boys and girls, I am so, so amazed at all the beautiful things God created. And my favorite part of that story is when it says, God created you with a purpose in mind. It's true, boys and girls. He made you special for a reason. We have such a loving God, don't we? The Bible tells us in John chapter 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world, and you can see his love in everything around you. And did you know that the way you live your life and the way you show love to others tells the story of God's love? We're all out of time, boys and girls. Turn to someone there with you and say, You are worth more than you know, capable of more than you think, and loved more than you can imagine. Good night. Mm -hmm.